and like we go into the bus and then everybody starts taking like naps and me i'm like whoa i'm wide awake this it's 3 a.m boys let's do this so i'm just sitting there fucking drinking jameson to the face because I'm fucking king shit now, and I'm just there chatting it up. I felt cool with... last night. <laughs> I'm like, there... Chris is how I heard this part. <laughs> Who's who, Mac Daddy, Chris Mac Daddy? Again? Well, I wasn't, yo, I was having a very, very good and personal conversation with Honey Bee because... Absolutely. She's super dope, and we were talking about ADHD because she, uh, her like her son, has ADHD, and I was asking her questions on how she kind of deals with that to get my own insight. It was actually a really fucking good conversation. Also, I like networked and was like, talk to talk to Holden. He can help you do stuff and all that shit. And I also showed her ADHD, so I got a. I gotta play on that on the bus. Yeah, that's all my diddly dallying. I got home and then the room spun for two hours until I passed out. I woke up and then Bonnie started telling me everything I did. And uh, let's just say I'm glad I wasn't very cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see JS is uh, in the chat on Facebook. But yeah, no, it was um, it was a vibe. JS was, was like, don't, he, he warned us though. He's like, you guys don't know what you're doing. We did not know what we were doing. I was nope. on my, this feels like high school. Let's have fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I, yo, I'm surprisingly not hungover. Like, I'm I feel it. Fucked. I'm a little off. My knee is in pain, but I'm good, yo. I'm good. I'm not. I did not get home and drink water and, like, take the Advils as I was told to. I didn't do that. <laughs> I don't know. Yo, actually, it. last thing, really, like, the last thing, bro, I have no idea how quick everybody dispersed from that bus. Bro, I am I... so... Bro, so, Travis wakes, like, I wake up Travis, he's got all his shit everywhere, so I'm, like, cleaning it up, <laughs> putting it in his bag, making sure we got everything, right? We were, like, right behind y'all. Like, we, like, it was an extra 60 seconds, man. Like, it wasn't much. I get out, and I'm like, where the fuck it? Nobody. Dispersed. Everybody Bro, left. Do you think Ghost I have out. a memory of any of this? Nope. I clearly <laughs> I knew like, that what? I did not have to make a decision at a certain point, and I just let that happen. I don't know that autopilot is a good mode, but I woke up, in my bed and yo it's crazy you? it's my keys was next to the toilet i don't but not in like a i threw up kind of way just my keys were in this spot between the toilet and the shower bathtub and i'm like how the fuck did my keys get here <laughs> and i mean i might have thrown up after i could be wrong on that part i don't know what happened at all probably between uh, 12 and when i woke up <laughs> I have, like, I, I when I thought about how long we were at the club and how little I remember, I'm like, oh my god, everyone must have hated me by the end of the night. Probably was that dude. Or apparently I was just out of it. I don't know. I mean, but nobody, but, uh, there was, like, no beef or anything. Like, nah, except for that girl's drink. She was ready. I mean, there was apparently, like, some, like, gang shit that was happening. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, straight up. Like, we were outside, uh, me, Travis, Bonnie, and then, like, bro, I don't know, dude, dude, who, like, DJ Mans, who's not Blaster, is walking around with a fucking golf club, and two homies pull up in a fucking 4x4, four four, and I'm like, bro, we out in the middle of Montreal, Blo this is, no, I, no, I know what's happening here. This isn't, like, Montreal shit. This is the, no, okay. And then, I don't know, some, whatever, and then the cops pulled up. Like, cops full on in, like, and it wasn't, like, a cop car, bro. This was, like, SUV cop bunker truck. And I was, like, what? I, I'm gonna stand here and smoke my cigarette. I ain't doing nothing. I there's some real shit going down. Like, I don't know, man. 
I don't remember none of this. However, I hear you should play pool with people. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, what's disappeared. Up, let's disappeared. Let's do this shit because there's still shit to do after today. I mean, yo, I gotta, you gotta be at Belmont for like seven ish. <sighs> I gotta puke like three more times, bro. Anyway, um. <sighs> What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Classic Quest Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about Dell the Funky Homo Sapien and Amp Live's Gate 13 project, as requested by our Patreon, Linda Williams. My name is Holden Stefan Roy, and joining me today is Hungover. My name is, my name is Chris Crow. Everything hurts, and I don't know why I do this to myself. Fuzzy Chris Crow. Um, so, we out here post partying for those that are on the live we are cutting this part out of the youtube videos that you just witnessed so we are live doing this at twitch.tv slash behind that suit where we play the songs in full and you get the whole experience and when you're watching this on youtube and wondering why we cut the songs out i'm gonna basically go in my head did you not see the last seven years of the copyright war anyway moving along moving along um hungover possibly still drunk let's be honest it was that much drinking and ready to go ready to have a fun time with y'all and high key this is i didn't know what to expect with this album but this was a ride and i'm ready for the ride today chris is like i'm not ready for no rides <laughs> um anyway I, this is gonna be a little all over the place y'all can y'all can live with it i think um we like to start the project off describing our familiarity with the artist because we know that the Del the Funky Homo Sapien and Amp Live fans that really love these guys are the only people clicking on an album review this long. So since we started our journey together, we should be a little upfront. So Chrissy Pooh, tell the peoples about your Del the Funky Homo Sapien slash Amp Live love or hate or whatever it may be. I mean... So I discovered Dell the Funky Homo Sapien on Deltron 3030 album review. That shit was fire. Um, just the whole concept of it. I don't know if I've ever really heard Amp Live. I probably have with some review. I can't remember, but I don't have an like I don't have any actual knowledge right now about who Amp Live is. Uh, but Dell has always been like storytelling, some out there adventurous journey. So I've always really enjoyed that. And he raps like really, really, really well. Um, yeah, so, turn your game down or something. Like a bit. Uh, I feel like. Uh, yo. Yeah, I like that better. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't really know what to expect of this project, except for it's going to be a lot of, like, really full power-packed bars and adventure, so. I That's was like, oh, shit, tell the funky homo sapien. I can't say I've ever really listened to one of his projects in full before, to be honest, except for Deltron, which is arguably... Um, his album but it's not because it's a group and all that stuff anyway uh lindell picked this project and i think it's interesting because i believe the deltron review is where lindell first encountered us in the first place and became a patreon along the way and has been with us for six ish years it's a long time it's been a long time lindell so um Along the way, uh, I've listened to tell stuff here and there. I mean, we've all heard the Gorillaz joints and whatnot, but I've always admired his his like skill and creativity and all of that. But I was just I never got in a mood to listen to him. If that makes sense, like he, he does like a very particular sound, and I guess that just kind of kept me from going down further the rabbit hole of Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Which having heard this project, I'm like, hmm. I think that was a mistake. I really like this. I really like what he does. I really like his mind and his, like, the way he does this cinematic storytelling album movie things, like, expertly. Like, it's some great. And, like, yo, he's he's very distinct, too. Anyway, I'm, I'm spoiling my feelings. It's just, like, yo, this man is really original in a, in a world where, like, you know, algorithms rule everything around me. Um... I don't know who Amp Live is. I went on the wiki page to see if I could figure it out, and I did not figure it out. So I don't really know um, him 
exactly, but I like the beats I heard on this project. It was fucking fire. So shout out Amp Live. That's my familiarity going in. Uh, let's talk about the cover and the title and all that because copyright. Let's go. How do you feel? I like the cover. I like the the yellow wall thing. It kind of actually like captures my attention. Um, the gate thirteen. I don't know the relevancy. Some sort of like whatever, like community thing, city reference from where they're from, or maybe like a district. Um, it's cool. I like I like how they're like just kind of going for a walk, but like it's positive like there's this sense of like it's a beautiful day it's happy doesn't seem super like dark or negative anything like that it's kind of fairly simple Mm. i like the rest the rest looks cool i never cared about rest until i listened to danny cortez talk about rest in his art and i'm like oh rest is kind of like real artsy i like the title and how it blends in and like the gate 13 looks like that's just actually gate 13 wherever the fuck it is and Mm -hmm. kind of like how it just looks like it was all part of the door um how regular it is right like they're just walking up the street it doesn't give you any context at all what this project's about to be which is cool too and having listened to it i feel that the the cover kind of adds to it because obviously the album's got its satirical goals and i feel like looking at how regular this album is for uh, the album cover is for how fire the actual project is and how over the top it really comes off it's like yeah i see you this really does extend the art of the project and i think that's really cool um anyhow let's get into it um the first one is called attention hey chris how do you feel about this uh, attention intro um i think it's cool uh it does kind of bring you into this little world kind of lets you know that they're like starting this theatrical show this like presentation of whatever this is going to be um i like the effects i like the the, like the scratchy synthy type of like robotic effects that happen there um <clears throat> there's a part within it where like it just kind of sounds like lobby music like waiting lobby vibes um the only thing that I can really reference it to, to make a point is like the game Let It Die where you're just kind of chilling in your little bass lobby thing and like waiting lobby music is just there and it's like this, the game itself is creepy and, and gory but it's funny. Um, and that's just kind of really what it gave me. It felt like we're, we're in this waiting lobby waiting to get seated and prepare for this show and you know it's about to be a banger I guess. Um, but it's a three on five like i liked it a lot more than that i was like like i feel like one of the overall motifs of this album at least musically is this like it sounds regular in the sense of like it hits the tropes of beat making and various musical notes that you would expect but they've thrown it on his head and it's topsy-turvy in some like abstract avant-garde kind of way so like when you listen to this it does have like this you know elevator waiting music but it also goes to like this crazy distorted experimental level while also just being like this crazy musicianship kind of put together into this strange productive things the the vocal effects used are cool and like you're you're really brought into a world like you almost picture somebody sitting there with like one of them ham radio things fucking like getting ready for something in some fallout-esque environment or something you know and i really feel like it grabbed my attention and it was extremely well composed but it did take several listens to like i guess filter it in my head enough to like fully appreciate what was happening i know like you know people consume musically differently but what for me like i have to hear it a few times to really like almost like put put the music into tracks in my head so i can like follow the music properly Mm because like that's how i hear music like it's been a long time since i hear the song as a whole really so anyway i gave it a 4.5 i thought it was like super interestingly made and like i could just bump it but like i mean i put it on for the project but like that just came on it's just like it's such a strange and interesting sounding thing um anyway next one's called wheel of fortune Mike. <clears throat> the answer is yes 
that's the that's the answer to this song. It's just yes, it's dope. Chris, what do you think? Um, I like I like the beat, the do 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 that type of like whole thing is pretty cool. Uh, I like how he flows on it. I. <sighs> Man, I was not ready to get, like, delified and just the way he, like, raps and, and does his thing. It's really good. So, like, my feelings on all of this is not right at all. Um, but, like, sometimes it's just, like, so much that my brain is like, what the fuck? But it's dope. Like, I don't know. It's dope. It's cool. I think that it kind of sets the tone of where we're going, and I do feel like we're just going to kind of be told that he's a really great fucking rapper. Bro, bro, first of all, we're introduced to the fucking protagonist of the project, Funk Pippin. I do not know if that is already an alias he's going by, but it definitely, because he comes back, and I feel like he's just... Like, I don't, like, I couldn't, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm not that deep on the story of this shit, but it is very satirical, right? So, this feels like, like, Rick, Rick, like, he's going into the typical <clears throat> pop rapper semblance of, like, what is being said to introduce this kind of algorithmic character or whatever, but doing it on this fucking stupid, incredible beat, like, so, like, if you listen to his flow, it's not even that, like, over the top or crazy. It's actually a really just good constant flow. He's putting in proper braggadocio. But if you, like, really listen to what he's saying, he's kind of commenting on the vanity of shit and how everyone's kind of fake or, like, the idea that people ain't really down to fight no more because, like, you know, guns and shit. And, you know, just kind of watching the transitions. And, like, Dell's from, like, the 90s and shit. So it's, like, he done... He's before the CCTV era and shit. From what I hear, right. it was different back then. Um, but this this whole song, like, the, the percussions and shit kind of come off, like, at first, like, what they're supposed to. But then, and, like, everything feels like it's actually like a modern hip-hop song except for what the fuck it sounds like. It's just all tapping into this more, like, EDM vibe as well, where I, I don't even know how to put the genres on it, but... It just is very out, like out there, and then it just flips halfway into this like alternate experience. Where by the end, I want to be turning up, like I'm listening to that Uzi Vert song. I just want to rock or whatever, and I'm like, how the fuck did we even get here? How did this all happen? And it's just the fact that he's able to make this work and rap so elegantly on something that sounds like this with all the transitions and stuff. I think is kind of like the flex here so it's like you know he's commenting other people really aren't out there doing it like this is what you is and if you really want to rap look at how i do it and it's like bars is good i'm not gonna pretend like i'm in fucking poetry analysis mode out of max right now but he's really saying some dope ass shit and it's fun to listen to and he's coming through or when you really think about it you're like yo he'd be really talking about what other people rap about directly but in a way where the package is so non-generic that it's kind of interesting i don't know i got into it like it made my head start spinning in that direction so i feel like we're just introduced to the topic on this track after the last one where it like feels like this little radio announcer is presenting something new to the world and then we get this where fuck man it's great this is like a 4.75 i really need to listen to it in a more normal state of mind to like fully know if it's a five or not but it's been a long time where since i really like heard a joint like that where like you know i really want to put that on my playlist like i have a weird relationship with music now and this one made me want to listen to it again like for real um anyway we can go on to the next one which is the glow i like that isn't that the ooh, yeah shoot makes me wanna shoot shoot day whoop isn't that one? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I feel like Chris is going to say, like, I'm hungover vibes on this one. So I just got to be like, yo, this shit is so good. It is such a fucking cool song. Everything I said about the last beat happens again on this beat. But, like, I'm a big sucker for, like, progressive evolution shit. Like, in the instrumental. Like, yo, prog rock had some cool stuff happening. 
and like the way that Dell just kind of doubles down he's like nah this is what this album is we are checking the mainstream you know he's funk pimping because as he describes on this track he comes through and he pimps the funk and so like when you look at what he talks about he's just fully committed to being real on the mic in a sincere way I'm like, tell the funky homo sapien is the kind of guy who has proven pretty fucking a lot of how he really is distinct. So when he be rapping this shit, you're like, yeah, hieroglyphics, man, definitely like he can make, he can make these claims. And what are you going to say? He's one of the most authentic people probably to like pursue art, at least in like this modern era of shit that doesn't get talked about. So it's like when you really think about it. And then he's pointing out, I guess, the plasticity of the modern media gambit. Like, there's some crazy ideas he's putting here. Like, um, nowhere, man, all you was a troll of the Beatles. Like, you're not, you're not anywhere. You're not really as big as you think you are. Or they just come visit the North Pole. You know it'll freeze you. Then he cuts in the fucking Sub Zero fucking sample, and then that Sub Zero tried too hard to be a weirdo. That really ain't you. So it's like. Um, Cause he's kind of a weirdo. He can call that shit out of it. You know, he's like, I know what real weird is. Um, I love the part where it's like what they call a game. I play hard and score the most. They give themselves, uh, extra points for lower goals. I don't know. What's the point. They show about perpetrating like they rich, you know, you broke and you know, it's true. I can see the hoe in you pimp by the bandwagon do what they told you to. And it's like, yeah, I guess eh? that's exactly what shit looks like after a while when you really watch things play out and people come and go and things and all the comments. I'm trying really hard to not get myself in more trouble with my mouth today because I already got myself in trouble recently with my words. So, Yo, I'd be, you know, the ego is a huge topic. So it's interesting to see Dell kind of lay into the lack of authentic art in this and then, then to kind of like drop that chorus don't get lost in the glow the glamour the glitz you just work her you don't know who the manager is like i really that's like a that big line like yeah. yo people don't even yeah <laughs> probably get punched a couple of times but i'll be fine then though um but like uh yeah that manager line's big right because like when you go to a show i got to be a stage manager the other day and that was a I met the road manager of an event of like a, a tour the other day. And like you start looking at like all the roles that go into it. And really the artist is the talent. They're not even really the decision makers of much. It's like everyone else be kind of telling the artist where to go and what to do and to pull up and perform. And a lot of shit's happening around the artist that the artist is putting faith into working. That's why you need to have your team and your people. And it kind of leads to all the other shit that comes from it. So I just thought that was a cool line because it's right. And that, like people don't really know a lot about how the bigger business works. I guess <clears throat> I'm just personally trying to learn that shit. Um, I like the cool because fools be thinking they're bigger than they are Napoleon Bonaparte Bonaparte line, but that's funny because Napoleon was apparently like actually just a reasonably tall dude, like five eleven or something. Like he wasn't like super short, but he was also like surrounded by the biggest, baddest motherfuckers in the army. So it was more like the guys next to him were like six ten. So that's why he comes off so short. And these anyway, that's not right. I love that's this. That's funny. Song. This whole shit's fucking great. It, the the beats fucking again amazing i love it a lot the way he continues to it's almost like in the last track he kind of flirted with the topic got you a little used to it and then you just fucking dug in on the <coughs> that is what the fuck this is this is a five on five it's a great song i do like it as well i like the beat i like the flow on it there was like a part though where i think it's in like the second verse he like breaks up the flow and it threw me off and like i don't know it kind of like judged like it kind of like knocked me down a little bit on the song so i was like it, it it was so like consistent and then nice and then something I, I don't know it was weird that's like just one little criticism i have about the song the rest of it's actually really really cool i do like how um with the the chorus <clears throat> chorus um don't get lost in the glow the glamour and the glitz like for me the way i took that was like yeah you've got the team and like like everything else but i also took it as like just the, the industry of hip-hop um like just 
no, we all I mean, show up. I mean, to it, these, like, like super literally, people be putting douce in your face all of a sudden. You like yo, <laughs> the amount of free booze that like it's it's real conversations I'm starting to have with myself. Like, like, yo, there's a lot of alcohol that just appears, and everyone's generous once they start drinking so all of a sudden you you plan on x anyway so you can get lost pretty fucking quick in the glamour and glitz i mean it's it's kind of how i looked at it right it's like there's that side of you understand that this is a business an industry and there's certain roles that have to be played but then there's that other side where it's just like the, the, the women the drugs the alcohol the parties the the riches the flashy lights all that shit so it's like that's kind of how i took it um the rapping is great except for that thing in like the second verse um i like that sub-zero line i like the achu that was kind of like a cool little effect that happened um but i'll be honest man i do not understand anything that he's like saying on this project just so i can get that out there like it's really good and it's really like I don't, I don't know if I want to say like profound rapping, but like, oh, I'm man, just, my brain cells are not like. Chris is like, this is too smart for me. I'm on my. Like, yeah. Versace, yeah. Versace, like, Versace, Versace, <laughs> Versace, Versace, Versace. That's where I'm at right now. The, oh, man. Anyway, um, but I did give this a 4.2 on 5, though. Like, it's actually a really, really good song. I love how, like, even the chorus kind of blends in with the track. I like how there's, like, a little bit of, like, a switch. Like, it's good. Like, the production and, 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 and the whole, like, like sonically, the song is good. So, 4.2 on 5. Fire times. So let's move on to the gravy train. All right, Chris, how do you feel about this one? I enjoy the chorus that like <clears throat> riding the gravy train the way he kind of flows with that was really cool um but it's okay it didn't have the same type of like energy the last one it had and it kind of brought me down a little bit of a level um again i get the sense that it's just like i'm a better rapper than you which i'm like cool you're gonna proceed to tell me why and how it is but I get there's also, like, this essence of, like, I think he's talking about the people who think they're on the gravy train in terms of, like, everything's gravy, everything's super good, like, you're the dopest type shit. Like, I, I know, like, that terminology is in, you know, supposed to be, like, a positive saying. Um, so I kind of get that he's, like, talking about these people who think they're really good, but, like, they're actually not, and they're all kind of, like, just fake and living this, like, little lie. But I was like, I like it wasn't the greatest thing, so I left it with a three point eight on five. Fair. So like riding the gravy trains, what you get with that meal ticket you're chasing, you know? Like often it's just people who like get in a situation where due to the people around them efforts, they uh they get a lot out of it. So I imagine there's a lot of the posse people, maybe like, you know, how there's like the main guy in a collective and then there's all the other people in the collective that act like they're maybe putting in all the contributing efforts. We're, we're, we're talking about a, fi a fictitious collective of like people, but like, you know, different level of efforts come in. So like you end up with people who kind of just get on this situation where they're getting paid or having success off of the, the context of their life and they believe it's a result directly of their efforts or that they've got the shit that's set for life or whatever i mean then things happen and i guess the shit will change but i think uh dell is calling people out on this one is again like a direct attack on people who just publicly sell themselves out in a sense or like they put their life out on display like it's really like dope or amazing or whatever and i don't know i mean shit we all do the same shit we all like fucking present the image we have of ourselves over social media to market our music and whatnot but like i think a lot of people manufacture a lifestyle like there's this one interview i i remember having where the artist was like um, it costs a lot of money for me to go to shows because I rap about popping bottles and shit, so I have to go pop bottles and shits to go to the show. And I'm like, that seems like a paradox that's, you know, avoidable by just not rapping about popping bottles you can't afford or wait so you can really afford to do it, you know? I don't know. The Disneyland line kind of points out again, like, people are 
living in this fabricated world where the labels and the pop markets put it all together. And yeah, a lot of people really believe that they're working hard, but don't really understand hard work. So Dell's coming at them. I feel like as the tracks go on, you're like, man, Dell Del was, it feels like he just felt away. Like, like sometimes when I feel the way and I talk too much, but like Dell came at this so elo- elo- eloquently and like, I enjoy it. I mean, I get the sense that like clearly he got pissed off. Somebody pissed off. But it's him like off. he's 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 talking about like he's he's one of them dudes that's probably been backstage with like everybody's favorite rapper. He's fucking mm-hmm. you know, like he can go where the fuck mm-hmm. he wants like that, right? <clears throat> so you'd be seeing people and you'd be seeing how like they are and how they live and how certain people are like really humble and about the grind and really about their fans and their work. And certain people are probably just present one thing in public and behave a completely different way in private. I haven't really been privy to a whole lot of that, but I know enough people have told me all about that kind of stuff. So he's probably watching, you know, the culture and whatever he's paying attention to and then decided he's going to just, knock everyone down a peg and remind them who the fuck he is on this project because like the bass line on this song is ridiculous so the beat <clears throat> is very rockish i find or like like it, it relies a lot on instrumentation whereas the other ones felt more synthesized which is cool right because as chris said it's a completely different vibe but i feel like it's a bigger flex like y'all can do what you want with music but over here we're gonna do this with it and it sounds so cool and, and different and i'm in love with that bass line um and then he just continues to to ride these beats properly and create these engaging songs with hooks that you can like remember and shit like so he's ele- he's writing really good songs about how other people are writing really corny songs but doing it in such a really profound way where what would normally bother me <clears throat> and feel cliche isn't you're like damn eh that is exactly new like no nope. what does this sound like who does it sound like no it sounds like Dell that's what it sounds like so mm-hmm. it really fucks with the whole like art project angle of what this this thing's doing. I like this song too. I'm gonna give it a four point five. Um, let's move on to Funk Rolla three point oh. All right, how do you feel about this strange <laughs> ad of a song, bro? I when the dude started rapping, <laughs> it was Jackbox <laughs> Thursday's robot rap battle thing for me, bro. Like the way he's free, the way he's going at it, the way he's rapping and shit. I was like, yeah, this kind of sounds like Jackbox to me. And that's why I thought it was funny. Besides that, I think it's kind of cute. Like they're making this like rapper robot product that they're trying to sell. Um, I think it's, yeah, yeah, I just think it's cute. It's really it. But I gave it a four on five because it does remind me of the robot rapping Jackbox. So. Well, I, like, thought this was a YouTube ad the first time I heard it. I, like, dead-ass stopped what I was doing and, like, flicked it over to be like, what? Where's the skip ad button? And it got me. It got me. And then if you listen to what it's about, it's basically this rap app that helps you rap for you. So you don't right. have to write your own raps anymore or be, like, authentic, you know? It's like... So it's, it's basically, it's, like, chat GPT? Well... No, but there was like the mother joints, like rap, not rap chat. I don't remember the names of it. There's a few of these apps where, like, for a right, minute, right. you could just download and get beats and freestyle on and have a whole bunch of sh- like effects there. And I'm not making fun of these apps. I'm just saying, like, it does feel like as time goes on, there's more and more tools or to help you rap based off of technology. So I feel like it was just a projection of where it's going. Which, yeah, leading to a chat GPT, I guess. I liked it. It was cool. It, it duped me. I'll give it a four. I don't know. I always feel weird with these little skit things. They're not really songs. They're like little ambiance points to move the project along. But this is really well done, and I like it. Um, the next one's called Run Free. This song's really interesting because it's like a double entendre with regards to but the plot point of uh, Funk Pimpin or whatever. <clears throat> coming through the hood now to like seek out these people who've been speaking on his name or talking this shit or presenting what they do and then does it from the perspective of like a person 
on the streets hunting for their prey. Like, people will, like, be like, I slide on my ops or whatever. He's like, oh, let me show you what I do when I slide on my ops. <laughs> and then he just breaks it down, stalks them. Dropping and, from yeah. the rooftop. Like, yo, he's like, like, oh, man. He's like, this, this is what we are. We on this kind of shit. And it's really creative. It's beautiful storytelling. It reminds me a lot of them, like... 90s crime rap story songs to be honest <clears throat> so it's like you just tap right into that bag the beat's so cool it feels more conventional like this just feels like more of a conventional song but it like fits into this this whole thing like the other stuff was him like being out there and maybe like flexing where it is and then as the movie moves on it's like it's go time now let me show you what i really fucking do like like every song is just like this Oh, you thought that was it? Let me show you next one. And I, I has this whole energy I really fuck with. And then just the idea of picture a world where you could run free without a care in the world except getting caught. You know, it's like this, that is the world we're in, you know, in, in a sense. And like, better keep it at the low. Don't answer it though. I never seen their face before. Better shut your mouth. Don't let the word out. They might catch us at the house. And it's like, I don't know. It's almost like he's really portraying what the life that is being portrayed looks and feels like in a different capacity you know like i mean it kind of where feels... you end up like that's what like the third verse here is or the last verse is like that's where you end up that's that's what this ends up being you know so like i like it a lot i think it's a 4.5 it's a cool i like the way it evolves at the end it's a good song i like this one it had a little bit more energy to it <clears throat> i like the uh creative like villain-esque bad guy hunting for his prey story that's going through there um what i really do enjoy <clears throat> is when he's like i meet him at their address and then blow him into fragments bro blowing somebody into fragments Yo, Chris, is like your gain down. your gain is too high blowing somebody into fragments is like way more severe than like just shoot you in the head type shit that's fair in my opinion um wow. i do like i i thought it was cool how they did this like it felt like a contradiction of like being able to run free in a world like without a care in the world except getting caught and i was just kind of like i feel like there's this like he's playing on this idea like there is some people in this world who kind of live like that and they don't actually fear getting caught they just kind of live their life and within this like villainous story it kind of feels like he's playing this role but then i also got this other side where i was like kind of looks like he's also just kind of explaining the hood that he's from or like at least the environment that he comes from as well like this could be interpreted as like just someone else who's kind of living through like this type listen... of life <clears throat> If you listen to the last few joints, he's calling out a lot of like what people present themselves at, and I think he's just kind of following it up. This is what I come from. Did you see any of this? Why does none of your shit sound like this? <laughs> you know, like since you're all about it, like where's the stories at? Where's the you know vibes at? Where does it really get to? Facts. I gave this a four on five. Fair. Um. The next track on this project is Help. All right, Chris, how do you feel about Help? I think it was cool with the whole, like, Star Wars theme. I strike the Empire back, give the enemy action, the Force is with you. Like, that was cool. That whole thing was cool. Um, I like the Millennium Falcon, Han Solo stuff. That was dope. Um, the rest of it kind of, like, really just fell off in terms of the verses for me. I don't know. I just kind of kept getting distracted. The beat's a little bit slower um, until, like, the end, which was kind of cool because the end switches up and has a little bit more of, like, an up-tempo. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is more fun. Um, but I like the chorus. Like, I like the way the chorus sounds. I like that, like, that, that anth like, like, not even anthemic, just, like, that <sighs> fucking choir, harp song sounding. Just is so great. There's this, like weird disconnect that i feel from it because there's so long and now you're beyond and everything is just it was really good um but that's kind of what i liked about it really the rest of it i was just like mm, the verses didn't really keep me that in that that interested um where are we it's a 3.5 on 5 
Wadden, bro. Wadden. This beat is fucking nuts. It's another amazing one. The fucking progression of the vocals at the end. Like, this is an experience. I was like, yo, it's only three and a half. I'm like, it's not even four minutes. And it feels like so much happens on this joint. He still keeps his calm pace with his rapping. Every line still fucking stops. I love the way he does the Star Wars shit at the beginning. I thought that was really fun. Um, But what really got me was the... Don't blame the game. Ain't nothing wrong with the game. Acting like you anybody. Somebody wanting the game. Squeeze the circle and the square. You don't belong in the game. To keep it funky, really, you be what's wrong with the game. And it's like, I think that's just interesting. Because, let's be real. You, pretty much every artist you've interacted with probably feels there's something wrong with the game that needs to get fixed. And... I don't know, Dell has clearly figured out how to navigate this game, you know, and figured it out. And, like, there is this industry and there is this business and there is all these things that happen and there is a hundred million ways to go get your shit done and shit, right? So I think he's just saying, like, reality is blaming the game is completely pointless. And just by blaming the game, you're kind of selling yourself out in a sense, like, of not wanting to participate or play the part. Like, yo, if we talk about just pushing one artist, just one person, you're gonna have, what, 10, 15 people that gotta be behind that person to really run everything? Like, shit, imagine if none of us ever had PR people. <laughs> shit, if we had PR people, we would be farther along because we wouldn't be saying all the dumb shit we say sometimes. Like, there's just so many roles that, like, are there. and. When people just criticize the way all this shit works, you know, like you can't figure it out. It just comes off goofy to the people that are actually making shit happen and, and doing the various things to pull things off. Like if you're <coughs> if you're too if you have enough time on your hand to complain like that, I guess, you know, versus feeling that time to change it. So that's that's what I kind of feel like he's taking from it. But just pointing out that at the end of the day, it's like the people that are fucking not really like like you don't really belong in the game but you're there and you're taking up space and you're you're putting bad vibes and energy into it and it's like fine why are you here then go somewhere that you want to be kind of thing i don't know i really like it i thought this was a great track and it really made me think and i'm like does going in but like in a very where's the lie kind of way so i really am enjoying the content of this album a lot and the way it's blending with such out there and like, you haven't really heard shit like this kind of beats. This is a really great project. I'm giving this a 4.75. Anyway, I know I got to be eating my humble pie in life because your boy, your boy gets a little too high, too close to the sun sometimes, gets knocked the fuck back down sometimes. All right, y'all. What do you, I mean, Chris, you, what do you think about humble pie? Um, I like the chorus, uh, that, like, auto tuny echoey robotic y effect is cool and like the like that that was cool um i like the ending i like the softness at the end and 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 her voice as well but i kind of just don't care about the song like i i couldn't like i sat uh, i sat through this and was like i don't care about beating up the, the the bully at lunch and fighting everybody like i just wasn't interested in it the beats really cool and Lana Shay, Shia, anyway, I don't want to ruin it, but she does a really great job. <laughs> Dell's rapping on this kind of made me, like, also not intrigued. It just felt like he was more kind of telling the story instead of, like, rapping, rhyming. However, it's still creative, and I do like it, but whatever. I, I just, yeah. So, this came at a... Uh, well, I put it at a four on five because it's good. It's just I don't care for the actual song, though. Like I, I just, think it's also just, like, serving as a warning. If you are acting the way you act, inevitably somebody will knock you down to size. So, mm -hmm. And it does its job in that regard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like the song is a little bit... Well, it was new, right, for the project, and it took it in a different direction. Like, it just kind of feels, again, like a story being told rather than, like, a song. So it, it, it feels, again, like, this, sometimes, like, these joints will come off more like you're watching a TV show for four minutes. Um, and uh, he just kind of did this story well. Bully come beating up peoples, and then all of a sudden the fucking dad beats the shit out of him and kind of adds that extra later, and... 
parents get fucking divorced and shit over all of that and it's like damn eh this is like a lot of violence creating violence type shit and uh i just think it's like in the context of everything of what we've heard so far on the project it's a lot of y'all might not be willing to to be that person and if you are wait till you come across somebody like me it's just like it's like a warning to let people know what it's really like out there like i know when i went to new york city for the first time i was like told like be yourself but don't be too much of yourself you know like remember this is not your home and you know sometimes somebody out there might check you on anything you say and do um i digress i liked it a lot it wasn't my favorite but i liked it a lot like i feel like on this project it's a weird vibe for me but it also felt like if you kept going without a change, it would have kind of got old there too. So I'm with it. I give it a 4.2. Would you give it a grade? It's a 4 or 5. I muted myself because I was coughing and I forgot to blow up. Alright, right, fly away, little fly. Or far away. It's not far fly away. away. My bad, everyone. Alright, Chris, how do you feel about this little interlude? L literal <laughs> quote? I mean, okay. Two Fair. on five. What was the non-literal one? <clears throat> what, was what was the, the non-literal quote? quote? <laughs> um, it's a skit. I don't really get the purpose. I don't understand. Like, it's cool. But, like... Bro, they just had a whole, like, story arc thingy play out. So, <laughs> you know? What no, like I, 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 I respect the whole story thing. I'm just this particular. I was like, I don't get it. So I think it's meant to like take you in a different direction after the trauma of the last song and everything. It's like okay, I think we're moving because I think the the album shifts in tone now. So it's just a way to like elevate, I guess. You know, fly away from all that bullshit and go far beyond. But I don't know. I give it a four. It's fine. Fair enough. I like it. I like the uh, I like the chorus from Go Go Appel. Um I like how she just sings it and it's just it's really smooth, really soft. And I do enjoy it. I think that there is this like aspect of <clears throat> the character I guess we're in the story, like the person of like the main character here is so far beyond anyone else and all these other like fake rappers and stuff that like they don't really see the greatness in him and she's kind of like reaffirming that um it's cool i actually really enjoy the beat i like this it, it's weird because it's like soft like slower but there's this like kind of up tempo to it it's, it's really, really good. I actually did enjoy this a lot. Uh, verse 3 has Zyme, which I thought was cool, too. He, he, for some reason, I think it's like he raps a little bit more normal to me. And I just like the way he did it. Like the A, B, A, B rhyme schemes and the different stuff. Maybe I'm just super basic. But I thought that that was also smooth, too. Um, you know, Dell does his thing and just... What I'm really impressed about is how detailed Dell is. Like, just as much as, like, like I know this is, like, a thematic whole project stuff, but every song you really do get, like, this, this visual of what he's trying to, like, write down and, like, what he's trying to express. So I think, I think that's cool, just going from song to song as well. Um, this song got a four on five from me. Yeah, I like this one, too. I feel like he's now, like I said, the it's more about him and his moves now <clears throat> rather than them and their moves. So it's like I feel like there's a bit of a tone shift. Like you say what he's had to say. I mean, I might be wrong. Maybe there's a couple more tracks that goes back to the core topic. But it feels like he's ready to go. He's, uh, he's like winning. He's doing the shit. And I feel like that kind of celebratory thing is cool. Like it isn't just all bleak in, in combat. It's more... Yo, like, when you get there, you're going to be so far beyond where you were and shit. And then I also kind of like how Zyme just kind of brings in some human shit, like his dad dying and, like, he's being sad and shit, and, like, regular. And he's just like, y'all are boring to me. I'm like, we're regular people doing this shit for real, real. And I like that whole energy. Beat's cool, but I felt like it was a little slow, a little long. I had a little bit more trouble getting into it. 
uh, than the other ones, but I also recognize it's an equally well-made song. So I'm going to give it a four, but definitely not one of the ones that had my attention as much as the other joints on the project. Although I do give Zyme more credit for being a standout next to Dell on that track. <clears throat> anyway, next up is Chili Sauce. All right, Chris, what do you feel about Chili Sauce? I like this song. I like it a lot. It's like poppy. It's like modern. It's like cool. Like it's actually really cool. I like the different variations. I like the different sounds. I like they got like a female singer on here, but like more the poppy vibe. I like uh, even Dell raps <laughs> with like not the Dell rappy. Like he took like it felt like he took on more of like a again like like generic rapping flow or something like that to kind of fit that like rappy pop vibe you kind of get on some songs right so that was really cool i i really like enjoyed it it's like a vibe and a half i gave it a 4.5 on five yeah that's really cool i mean it wasn't like a whole lot to it and almost like in terms of lyrics and content like that regard because like it's basically just the music playing and almost like reminiscing of the other times and the better, almost like the better times. Like it feels like you're winning, you're far away, like you were just in the last track and now you're just reveling in when you were there. Because in a lot of ways, like Dell's saying, yo, I come from a different time than y'all and I'm still doing this and we are not the same. And so like to come with almost this like, I don't know, Bruno Mars style fucking joint um, like coming out of nowhere on this thing, it's just like, Yo, it really is nice, and it's so unexpected, and it's really upbeat, and it also adds, like, a different energy to the album than we've had, which started off more chaotic and negative, and it's almost like it starts off, like, this crazy avant-garde experience, and the farther we get into the album, the more it, like, delves into, like, regular pop sounds, which I think is really cool. Anyway, maybe he just used the Funk Rolla 4.0. Do you like it? Do you like the funk rolla? It it makes me laugh because I like how I like how she like at first is hesitant and is questioning what's going on and all this stuff. But like just like media and how marketing works and how they shove it down our throats, it's like eventually you kind of just buy into the product that's like being thrown into your face. And that's kind of what I took from that. I thought that was really cool. Because by the end, he was like, you're doing this. And she's like, oh, okay. I thought it and was like, cool. If we think about how like the Funk Roller 3.0 presents this idea of like how you don't even really need to make your own art no more to be an artist. So it's like just kind of like now we're pushing this. Um, even bigger because the 4.0 is the next edition so we're pushing it to people it gets at the next level now it's eat this bullshit fake music that got made up by robots and i know that sounds crazy but there was like a twitch streamer recently who they found out was like completely fake and ai generated and she had subs and shit so it was coming some really it's like it's coming and you won't we won't know I mean, dude, uh, I have it. you not, just on the AI conversation, like, has nobody seen, like, the Joe, uh, the Joe Biden, uh, Bush, Obama, and, like, uh, Nick's, um, meme where the AI has, like, created their actual voice, uh -huh. and basically, like, you'll have, like, whatever, Trump there, like, a photo of Trump with, like, a headset on, and then there's, like, a, a, a video of, like, call of duty zombies and the ai is like talking as if it's like trump and the, the various other presidents and they're like commenting on the game and they're like arguing with each other and like yelling at each other calling each other names and shit like bro it's just, it's it's here yeah sit your ass down ai bots all right chris do you like this one yeah it's cool um I, I like the funkiness to the beat. I like how it kind of flows through. I think it does kind of carry the project along with the sense of like, I think he's talking to the robots the way I, I kind of understood it. And then, yeah, I'm brain dead. I'm sorry. It's a four on five. So I feel like we just, like, cause the, it, it, it starts off directly tying into the ad, right? Like she says, oh, and then immediately get it 
got it you get what you pay for and it's kind of a commentary i think on the consumer as well like they're kind of tying into music being what it is the beat's really fun and funky and you know again it evolves and has that progressive feeling like the other ones have had and he just kind of dances on this beat with a bunch of angry braggadocio not angry sorry a bunch of braggadocio but also again on that like yo don't be corny around me it's like less like i'm the best and more i don't want you to be corny near me go go get better go behave behave appropriately i don't want to have to check you like it has that kind of attitude to it as he's going through which you know we've gone through this project and he's kind of laid out everything he's got his grievances with so it very much is in line with what we've heard so far so i guess i was a bit wrong before but i do enjoy it i don't have a lot to comment on the individual lines i just feel like he's here he's proving his point and i love the way the fucking third verse flips up and sounds really 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 dope it didn't get me on no creative rants i'm sorry if you were hoping for one um but i gave it a 4.5 super fucking interesting to listen to and i feel like the project never gets stale because they keep fucking with your expectations and not letting you know what's going to be next and that's a really great feel um but having something so funky after funk rolla makes sense anyway maybe today we're not that on the ball that's what booze will do to you all right chris pay attention to the damn review Uh, this song is dope i like verse three verse three is my favorite verse on this because he does the double time triple time flow and I thought that was really cool. I do like the little hyper speed up laser like like techno y kind of sound in the track. So that's also dope too. Um it was it was fire. It's actually one of like the better songs in my opinion on the project. Um I gave it a four point five on five. I thought the beat was pretty nice. I like the way it kinda had this more video game ass theme than I feel the other ones did. It felt like you could picture this up at a rave somewhere with Dell walking out or like a Coachella or some shit. <clears throat> and it would just fly so well there. Um, I kind of like the the intro part where they got a special guest and then there's a feature on the track. Um, Eli did his job. He did it nice. And he came through. As far as the bars go, yeah, I, I feel like we're now in that territory of the project where unless there's a huge topics flip up, I feel like I've said what i said i like it like i like the other ones he's definitely more in this grandiose i'm winning position and kind of almost looking down on other folks who are just not really doing what they should be doing in the game it's the same type of shit it's like i don't feel like a lot was changed there but musically it's on a whole other vibe and wavelength so that you're still on some fresh feeling things regardless of the fact that i don't have a lot to say about the bars except that they're really good and all that crap hungover me is not the best album if you were maybe we still gonna probably get fucked up again in the future anyway get some of this how do you feel about this one i like it i like the do 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 like the beat the, the up the up and down in the beat is really really cool um i like how he just kind of lays out what he doesn't like about like rappers and shit and just kind of goes through the whole thing and only at the end really ties it up and he's like bro if the shoe fits the shoe fucking fits and i i thought that was really cool how he did that um pretty solid like it's actually a pretty pretty solid track it's a four on five yeah i like it a lot i love this beat i love the fact that he literally is on some clapping stripper shit talking shit but it makes total sense because he's funk pippin and so he's fun pimping out this whole fucking shit like it's it's lit i really like that like <clears throat> vibe that he does i like how he he goes nuts on this flow like this is like the first one i think where he was just trying to show you how intricate he can be on this arguably very pop beat very pop very like you could picture this in the club and shit <clears throat> and so it's like seeing him <clears throat> make these songs that are arguably so marketable but so distinct while rapping about how He's better than other people, and in a sense, regulating the situation um, is really entertaining for me. I thought it was kind of cool how at the end, uh, he's pointed out how overnight success is not the same as delivery. If they got it overnight, it would bewilder me. And it's true, like, right? Like, who actually gets overnight success, like, in, in a real sense of it? Like, yo, we be talking to people all the time. Everyone's like, yo, I used to practice singing when I was four. Well, then it wasn't fucking overnight success, was it? They were practicing singing when they were four. 
Um, I also like how they get broke down, reduced to grinos, make sure the transmission's cool. If you think I'm dissing you by the description, then this is you. And it's like, well, if the shoe fits, broski. I'm not saying your name, but if the shoe fits, it's what it be. And I don't know who pissed him off, but he definitely went the fuck in on them, <laughs> on this whole album. I like the outcast part too. Put big boys in their speaker box. That was nice. Anyway, I think this, um, even then, Lindell, even then for porn stars, I don't think it's overnight. I think there's still a grind. Um, I give this a 4.5. It's a 7.5, whatever. It's one of the better marks. I really enjoy there this is. track a lot. They submit, like, they submit their home videos to, like, Pornhub and shit, and then they get views like you would do to YouTube, and then they get scouted for pornos. Yeah, it's not overnight. It's a whole grind. Anyway, we have some lateral thinking. Fair enough. Um, I kind of like how he ends it on this idea that creativity is something that's a skill that's learned, showing that they're... There is something to be pursued here, and it's not like just him complaining. It's like take this lesson and grow from it. Let's leverage our lateral thinking to uplift and make it better. So I think that ending on that note's really cool. Otherwise, this was just fucking amp life flexing on us for like four minutes, switching beats up, doing all kinds of vibes. It almost felt like everything you heard on the album sonically squished into a singular song kind of closing it all up like the credits of the movie were rolling and shit i thought that was pretty cool so yeah it's four and a half on five i like this i really did enjoy like the 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 experimental trip that we got um i think it does kind of fit the project and kind of does a nice close up on it yeah i left it with a four on five yeah. well done i think I alone it may be weird. Yeah. Yeah. I think alone it may be weird, but like in terms of the project, it's good. But yeah, so that's our album review for Gate 13 by Del the Funky Homo Sapien and Amp Live. If you just tuned in for this part, we got faded yesterday and we're suffering today. That's why it's like this. It's going to happen a lot, I think, on Sundays. Because <laughs> we go out on Saturdays and we do this on Sundays. So it's like, eh. Um, anyway, I like this album a lot. I think it's an interesting social commentary and satire piece on creativity where, <coughs> unlike just whining about the mainstream or the vapid shits, he creates a whole experience showcasing why his level of creativity <coughs> operates at a different level and welcome to the minds of Dell and Amp Live. Overall, this project's fucking brilliant. It's, like, really nice, like... I know why nobody heard this shit because it's too, like, out there, I think, for, like, the pop world to really want to digest something like this. But this is some fucking crazy cool music that makes me go, damn, I'm not even creative. He really be out there doing some interesting things. And, like, it makes me dream bigger with what I want to do with my music, to be honest, because it's cool. It's cool to see people like Del the Funky Homo Sapien be such a funky homo sapien. That's what I think about that. <laughs> I mean... I like the project. I like the art behind it, the creativity and everything, but this isn't kind of left this project going like, yeah, I ain't going back to this. Um, I think chili chili sauce is probably one of the songs I'm going to take off like onto a playlist. The rest of them, they're dope. They're solid, but I don't know, man, like you're either going to really like the project or you're not. And that's just Thanks. where I kind of left with everything. I was just like, it's all good music. I don't think Chris is not his vibe. I think Chris is hungover, so nothing is his vibe that has boom, 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 boom in his ears for like... <laughs> no, actually, so the vibe, I mean, I like Deltron, and I guess that's where I'm making it my own fault, because to me, Deltron was really cool, and like just the way everything kind of flowed, I got lost in this story. I didn't pick up on like shit. I didn't really understand it. So, I don't know. It's fine. The project's a four on five. So yeah, thank you all for being here with us today as we went through Gate 13 by Delta Funky Homo Sapien and Amp Live. If you're watching this on YouTube later, we did play all the songs live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash behind that suit. Pull up, throw those Amazon Prime free subscribes at us. That would be lovely. Uh, Patreon.com slash behind that suit if you want to be like Lindell and tell us what to review. Um, we're going to change that soon though. For So you could probably just do that now before I change the Patreon again. Um, 
like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I don't know what else to say. I got to go take a nap. Live long and prosper, everyone. Bye.